also. Odcha Hashem ki anitani. All these, all these things. It says that King David was a very, in a way, simple man and became a very, very uh, important person. It's Hashem who runs the world. It's Hashem that made it this way. Once we look at him this way, everything is different. King David wrote Sefer Tehillim. Sefer Tehillim, we have 150 praises of Hashem all the time. Starts with Ashrei, blessed is the person, finishes with Kol HaNeshama Te'alei Ya Hallelujah. Means every person in the world should praise Hashem. And everybody explains it, I'll call neshima u neshima. Every breath that you take, you should thank Hashem, right? So, this is uh, King David. Um, now, a human being needs usually all kind of stimulations to awaken the happiness inside him. Sometimes a person, he awakens himself through all kinds of artificial things. Let's say he wants to drink some wine. We say, yeah, yes, I'm achle, but I know she can make people happy. And so he drinks one. How long he can stay happy with this wine? Momentary. As long as you know, he has this wine on, let's say, and he doesn't drink too much. If he drinks too much, he doesn't feel also all right. So, um, and um, so many times people have to be careful with what does it mean to be happy. They say sometimes people have too much laughter and kalut rosh. Kalut rosh would say when people are too giddy about, giddy about things. Um, um, this is something that's called leitzanut. Leitzanut means when people, they are um, bluffing about things, making fun about things, making fun about people. It's interesting to see that all our fathers, they suffered from these people who make fun of other people. Lake Sanehado, it's called. Every place, every, every person went through this uh, uh, travel of Lake Sanehado. Speaks about Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu and Sarah couldn't have children for many, many years. And once Sarah was by Avimelech, after that, she got pregnant. Now, all Eitzanehado, all these jokers, coming out and say that Sarah got pregnant from Avimelech. We know that it wasn't from Avimelech. We know that it was from Abraham, from Abraham Avimelech. It's just that Abraham was praying at that moment for Avimelech to be healthy again. So Hashem answered his prayer also. It says, to calm down, to quiet all these jokers, Hashem made the face of Yitzchak, the Same. image of Yitzchak, exactly like Abraham Avinu, mm -hmm. so that people will not have questions. This Yitzchak came from Abraham, not from anybody else. And still, these jokers continue making fun. What was the idea of these jokers? To put him, hmm? to put him down. Huh? Not only to put him down. They say Abraham Avinu came to this world with some kind of ideology. There is God. There is somebody that takes care of the world. And they say Avraham Avinu was talking nonsense. Avraham Avinu doesn't have continuity. This is what they continued saying all the time. His revolution idea is, doesn't have anything with reality. He talks nonsense. Once Sarai gave birth to its hang, it didn't keep them quiet. They continued talking. Ah, they saw continuation. No, now it's not it's Abraham's son. It's probably Abimelech. And they continue talking. Meaning, they want to uproot all whatever Abraham did in this world. Like Sanera do, these jokers, they were not some people, few people in the generation that would make, like, uh, make fun of him. Yeah. They would be the mainstream of the generation. Most of the people would think whatever they think. And these people are very, very dangerous when they make fun of rabbis. Oh, this rabbi. Another example here. Speaks about Yoshiyahu HaMelech. I don't know if you know it. Yoshiyahu, he was the grandson of Menashe. Menashe the king was a very, very wicked man. 
he was doing any idol worshipping possible that there was in the world, he was doing it. This was Menashe Amelech. Menashe Amelech died. His son Amon was a king for two years. He died too. And then Yoshia, okay, came to the throne. It says about Yoshia that he burned all the idols that they used to work by the time of his grandfather. He made idols all over Israel, and he burned them down to the ashes. He broke all the other idols that were done from, I don't know, from metal, from wood, from all kinds of uh, uh, elements over there. He took all this pamot, uh, the stages that they would uh, sacrifice, and he broke them. He uh, took care of all these priests. He, he cut off all these trees that people used to worship for idols. He did basically whatever needed to be done so there would not be any idols in Israel anymore. He even took care of the, of the altar that Yerov Ambenevat, okay? He put all over Israel, even this. Basically, he cleaned Israel from there, and he made all the Jews come back to Hashem. Menashe had did teshuva. Menashe, in the end At of the, the end, days, but it wasn't but enough to reverse the time. No, he didn't change. He didn't change so much. Uh, the Israel, they yeah. they all kept uh, still idol uh, worshiping. And they say it, uh, the Torah testifies over there in the prophets. They say lo haya lefanav. Melech Asher Shav El Hashem Becholem Avod. There was not a king that came back, that returned, that repented so much. Okay? Ve'acharav lo kam kamo. Even after him, there was no such a thing. Okay? Melech Yoshia. So he made a great job, right? What happened about the late Sanado of his generation, these jokers? They continued to worship idols. He didn't know that. But they did it in a hiding way so that he won't see, he won't realize. What did, it, what did they do? They make uh, the image of their idols in the back side of their door of the house. One from this side of the door, one from that side. Or only when you close it from the inside, you can see <laughs> the image of the idol. This is what they do. Again, what is Leitzanado? What does the Jokers try to do? To uproot all whatever this king was trying to do so much. Another example, we read it last week in Parashat Pekudei. Moshe Rabbeinu, he gives a report, okay, of all the expenses that he did for the Holy Temple, for the Mishkan. They say he didn't really have to give this report. Why did he give this report? Listen to this. It says that Jews look at him and they tell him, look at his neck, Moshe Rabbeinu. See how fat he is? Look at his thighs. You see how fat he is? It's all from us. Where all, where, where became so fat if not from us? Because of us, all his money. He became wealthy, he became rich, all because of us. Moshe Rabbein didn't understand it. He had to give a report so people would not think that he took this money for himself. Okay? Where, where exactly would he have money from? Exactly. Or what he would do? They got man. He didn't get extra food. How he, become, how he becomes exactly rich didn't make sense. When Jews left out of Egypt, everybody was looking for, 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 for money and gold and stuff. He was looking for the, for the atzamot, for the bones of Yosef. He, he was never caring about money. But the jokers always make fun, always wants to put down somebody that is really trying all his best. And because they are not in his level, they're making fun of him. You know, this rabbi, he's a thinker. He's, he's not true. Um, so it continues, there's a lot of it. And I want to finish with the example of David Amelech. David Amelech also suffered from these jokers. It says that Hashem informed David Amelech that his son, King Shlomo, will be the one that will build the holy temple, not him. His son. David Amelech was happy, at least my son. What were the jokers coming and telling him? David, when we're going to go to the house of to the holy temple, meaning we want you to die so that your son will already build the building, well, the holy building. So David Amelech knew 
that they're saying all this to make him upset. But he wasn't upset, he was happy. Because it reminded him that the building, the holy, the holy temple will be built by his son. And he says, I was happy when they told me, Beit Hashem, when we're going to go to the house of Hashem. And um, Hashem told him, your son Shlomo will build a house to bring all kinds of uh, sacrifices okay, from the Jewish nation to me. And I like all the justice and the court that you do more than the sacrifices that Shlomo will bring. He says, one day that you study Torah, for me, is more than 1,000 sacrifices that Shlomo will, will bring. Okay? This is how Hashem <laughs> calms him down that uh, he believes in him and he's fine and he's okay. So, from the other side, in Masechet Tanit, it speaks about Rav Broca. Rav Broca was uh, walking in the market and he sees Eliyahu Navi and he asks him, are there some people here in the market that will inherit Olam Abba, the next world? He says, yes, there's two people. Now, they don't look so much religious or something, but there's two people, they will inherit Olam Abba. So he comes to them and he asks them, what are you doing? What is your job? He says, we're happy people. When we see a sad person, we come, we, when we make him happy, he becomes happy. That's our job. And these people, they are these people that inherit Allah Abba. They don't make fun of people, they make people feel happy. Okay? <laughs> and so, uh, people will forget after a while what you said, or, um, or what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. If you made them feel good, they will remember it forever. They will remember. And um, this is something good that Rav Roka learned. So now we say, We're supposed to be happy. I want to tell you, Chodesh Adar, this month of Adar, has this ability, has uh, in, his, in its luck, in its mazal, it's a mazal of happiness and laughter. Not only happiness, but also laughter. <sighs> Last, uh, this month, for the Shadar, I'm sure it was, we have the privilege to have a grandson by the name Itzhak. Okay? Named after the rabbi, my husband. Um, it says, Be'achrit ha'yamim, Masechet Psachim, Hashem will make uh, a big feast to all the children of Yitzchak, Yitzchak Avin. Okay? And then in Masechet, there's a whole big description, who is going to bless, who is going to say, Bakat a whole big thing, we don't want to get in there. And then in Masechet Shabbat, it says that in the future, Hashem will come to Avraham Avinu and you tell him, you know something? Your son made a sin. What should I do? How should I punish them? Avraham Avinu says, oh, B'nai Israel, they made a sin. Yimachu al kudushat shimcha. Punish them. Whatever needs, if they did, what can I do? Abraham Avinu, this is what he said about uh, the sons. He was taking care about the people of his dome. He was taking... He goes to Yaakov. He says, maybe Yaakov, that he built a big house, a lot of children, and he suffered for them. Maybe he will have some mercy on them. He, can, he, tell, he tells him, B'nai Yaakov tells him the same like his grandfather. He machuak to shachimcha, punish them. He comes to Yitzchak. He says, "Banecha chatu, your children have sinned." Yitzchak says, "Why do you say banecha chatu? Are they only my children? They are also your children. Why do you say my children? You say when they accepted the Torah, you say bni bechori Israel. You say my kids. So it's your kids, not only mine." And then he starts a whole big. A negotiation with Hashem. So what? They see. Let's say, he said, let's see. A, a average life of a person is 70 years. Okay? First 20 years, don't pay, uh, don't, don't make an account because he's too young, he's not uh, responsible for his sin. Okay? You take out, uh, you reduce 20 years, left 50 years. Half, half of his lifetime, he's asleep. He doesn't make sense when he's asleep. 25 years left. Half of these 25 years, he's eating, he's drinking, he's going here, he's going there. Whatever is left is what? Huh? 
12 and a half years. You know, Hashem, erase the sins. Take care of it. And if you don't want to erase it, half will be on my account. I'll take half of it. So it's Hak is the one that takes responsibility for the sins of the Jews. And Hashem sees that he took the responsibility. Hashem knows that Yitzchak is already Olat Mima. He already sacrificed his life in his lifetime for, for the Jews. He says, you know something? I will uh, erase the sin. Because of my mercy, I will uh, forgive the Jewish nation. What is the word Yitzchak? Yitzchak is a verb. He will laugh. What kind of name is he will laugh? Who names his child? He will run, he will go, he will cook. This is what is it? He, he will laugh. It's hard. When do we laugh usually? Whenever there is a joke, usually we laugh. What happens in a joke? You say a certain story, all of a sudden there is a different twist in the end, and it, it makes fun, and it makes, uh, and you laugh because of this different twist because of this different okay. angle in the story. This is why you laugh. This is its heart. For many, many years, as we said before, its heart. I'm sorry. For many, many years, Abraham and Sarah don't have children. All of a sudden, Sarah gets a promise. Oh, Next year, oh, she's going to have a child. So she is laughing in her heart. But it's Chak Sarah Kirba. She starts laughing. How can somebody believe that such a thing will happen? Abraham didn't have a way of having children in Sarah didn't have a womb. She, no matter. Didn't have a womb. She couldn't have kids. She couldn't have got pregnant. And then we say that in the age of 90, when it doesn't usually, it doesn't make sense, not reasonable at all, in the age of 90, she'll be able to have a boy. This is what everybody made, wait, uh, where uh, she made, a, she, 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 she was laughing about this. This is why they named him Yitzchak. Something different that happened. Nobody expected such a thing. This is unusual. This is Yitzchak. We say, in the future, when Hashem will bring back all the Jews from all around the world, we were like dreamers. Where did you see that after 2,000 years, a whole nation comes back to its land? There's not such a thing. And once it happens, we say, this is when we're going to laugh because nobody believed that such a thing would happen. This is what happens in Purim. Purim is such a darkness, such a big decree upon the whole nation, and all of a sudden, there's a nice twist over there, and everything changes to the best. And then we say, All of a sudden, they feel such great happiness. They have such great happiness. Why? Because there was such in the darkness. So dark was everything. It didn't, people didn't understand how th this thing can change all of a sudden 180 degree angle no. to the best. And it did. And so um, this is when the Torah teaches us that every detail in, the, I'm sorry, the Megillah teaches us that every detail in the Megillah was arranged from years ago. Everything was calculated, all the details exactly, okay, Hashem calculated to save the Jews. And this is the happiness that people felt just because they knew how deep they were in the darkness and they saw how Hashem guarding them, guiding them, uh, keeping them, taking care of them, watching them, carries them, and this is what makes us happy. Thank you. Question?